Loneliness is not the same as aloneness. And when you're alone, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're lonely. Yo, Elliot. Yo, Elliot. How do I get the loneliness feeling out of my head? I live alone, but I have family that live close. A company with great employees, friends at the gym, a football team I'm a part of. At the end of the day, I have a sense of loneliness despite the reality of having a large support group around me. This loneliness feeling ends up causing me to get distracted by dating apps, social media, and can make me come off as needy when uh, meeting women. Any advice? So I want you to make this distinction in your mind. Loneliness is not the same as aloneness. And when you're alone, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're lonely. Being alone just means that there's nobody around you. And when you go home at the end of the day, you're literally alone and you're in your aloneness. Loneliness is a judgment about that state in your life. Loneliness comes from fear. It comes from needing and wanting, like you say. Rather than being stoic and logical about what is and then accepting it as it is, I'm alone, you have opinions about it, hang-ups about it. And the real issue about this whole falling into loneliness has a lot to do with what we've been talking today, and that is not appreciating and submitting yourself to God's will for you. God's will for you in those moments when you are alone is aloneness. We'll talk a little bit about that in a moment. You're trying to subvert God's will for you by having judgments about it, rejecting it, resisting it, and then trying to fill it with satisfaction, self-soothing. Mm-hmm. That's what dating apps are. That's what porn and masturbation and smoking weed or drinking or scrolling through social media. I know you're not doing all those things. They're all a matter of uh, trying to self-soothe. And then when you do meet a woman, you've got all this angst about fulfilling that emptiness that you have been clogging up with self-soothing in hopes that she's going to fulfill that for you. I'm not making fun of you, but I get animated sometimes. What that leads to is neediness, but not only that, but then woman worship. This is how women get put on a pedestal because we tend to think, we start to believe that she's going to fulfill that lonely place in my heart. Right now, you're being put in school. Before that desire for a woman can be fulfilled, God wants to fill you up with his presence. In your aloneness, you get the only opportunity to fill yourself up with God's presence. Because nothing can fill the size of our desire but the creator. This is why all addictions occur. Because we try to take that God-sized hole in our heart and fill it with small things. And when we fill it with pornography, dating apps, social media, drugs, women, they're too small. And they give us a little bit of a, a sense that that hole is is filled up, really it does it, it distracts us from the hole, and we think, oh, oh, this feels good. But the minute that thing goes away, right, the dating app goes away, like you realize, oh, what am I doing? The woman breaks up with you, you see the futility in social media, the drug high wears off, that hole shows itself again, 
And you know what, you, what we end up doing? Go right back to that thing. Let me smoke a little bit more weed. Let me get another, another hit of this woman on the dating apps. Let me, get in, let, me, let me numb myself with this social media. Pure, and we call this effeminacy around here. We call that effeminacy, which is the seeking of pleasure and the avoidance of pain, struggle, challenge, austerity, discipline. Right? These are the very things that, that make a man a man. Any man who indulges consistently is effeminate. And so you find yourself with this opportunity. Here's the thing. You get an opportunity. This aloneness is an opportunity. And you have a choice. You can fill it with effeminate, fleeting things. Or you go deep into it. You go deep into the aloneness and it is, it is going deep into the aloneness that the presence of God emerges. God has, he doesn't show himself when we're distracted. Maybe he's there, but we can't see him because we're distracted. But you're given an opportunity right now and you're throwing the opportunity away by filling it up. I know this all sounds very impractical and challenging, right? And I'm not, I'm not preaching like I'm an expert in this. I think about these things and, you know, I have some resources to point to. But you've heard me say time and time again that a man is best serving his masculine core in one of two stations. Marriage, right? And marriage is one of these things too that we're, 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 we have to yield to God in. Otherwise, we go try to find a woman and it's usually what we've seen from you know, Nickelodeon when we were kids. Oh, you know, those kind of make-believe girls. Marriage or monk. Take a page out of the books written by monks. Read Ignatius Brianna Shav in the book, The Arena. It's all about how to be by yourself. Read the, the sayings of the Desert Fathers. These are men who became hermits. It's all about being, your, being by yourself. Reading this book by Alphonsus Rodriguez, Christian Perfection. It's written for monks in a monastery. We will, there is an answer to what to do with the time that we have in our hands that we usually squander in effeminacy. And it is represented by the lives of the monks and the lives of the saints. This is such a beautiful thing. You don't have to do it on your own. What are other books that I can offer you about, you know, the life, the life, the life, life in the monastery? Life as a monk. Look it up. Sayings of the Desert, Desert Fathers, The Refuge, and The Arena by, by uh, Brianna Shav. I'm fascinated by these things, but I've never been there. <laughs> I've been married since I was a teenager, right? But I'm fascinated by these things, and that's why I can bring you this stuff. I would love to hear how it works out for you guys, right? I don't want you all to think that I got the answers. I just have resources because my mind is always going. So my advice to you is fully, fully, fully embrace monk mode. And I don't say that in a secular way. I say that in a religious way because these men live disciplined lives of devotion. You work, you have a business, you got a great life. You have the grace Check this out, how lucky you are. You have the grace to be comfortable and alone. You have no worries. You got enough money. I know you do. You, you got a good business. Be comfortable in your aloneness and all kinds of things are going to blossom for you. All kinds of things are going to grow for you and grow in you. And God is going to do a work in you and through you. But you got to learn how to be. 
done. Did you know that there's a secret psychological and social war on masculinity in the West since at least the 1960s? If you think I'm crazy, you need to watch my new free masterclass. You'll learn the history and origin of this war as well as how it's affecting your health, your finances, and how females respond to you. If you're a man who's open to a compelling vision of traditional masculinity, financial freedom, success with women, and generous leadership, then you'll definitely want to study this class. It's called Make Men Strong Again, How Millions of Men Are Fighting Back and Winning the War Against Masculinity. Just click the link in this video or visit MakeMenStrongAgain.com and get this brand new masterclass. It's completely free. It will blow your mind and has a ton of value and it's about 40 minutes long. So make sure that you pay attention and take notes. Why am I sharing this? I'm a mentor to millions of men worldwide on YouTube. So I'm familiar with the biggest reasons why men today are failing in so many areas of their life. And the answer will rock your world, but it's not totally your fault. Find out what's really going on. Click the link in this video to watch this class and start taking action today.